Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Saratoga Racecourse here on Saturday. It is August the 6th, 2015. It's Whitney Day from Saratoga. It's a great card. I'm going to look at all the stakes races, starting off with race number 7 and ending off with the race number 11. So starting with race 7, ending with race 11. Uh, before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at HorseRacingKit5 for more selections. Great card from Saratoga, I must say. You very rarely get a bad card. I, you have to say that also. So let's get on to the Whitney. Um, got my Whitney pro, uh, program. They saw it down here in the city uh, the day before. That's really good. Uh, so let's race number seven from Saratoga. First race I'm going to look at is the fourth one of the Thasic tipped in lower stakes. Purse hundred thousand dollars for four year olds and upwards. Never won a graded sweepstakes in 2016. We only have nine horse. We have a field of nine horses. Not only nine horses, but it's an ex extraordinary field of nine horses traveling a mile sixteenth on the Mellon Turf course, which is the outside of the turf course. It's the Widener, shall we say. Uh, and it's a, you know, a good race here. And I'm going to go to the five horses, the top selection of March, making his first start since November. Uh, hopefully this horse will really do well here. I'm going to go five, six, eight, seven, five, six, eight, seven for Superfecta. Um, number five, March, nine to two, Irad Ortiz Jr. for Chad Brown out of Blame. They bought this horse at the Keelan November 2012 sale for $320,000. So they spent a little bit of money to buy this one. Last time out, Del Mar, uh, November 28th of 2015 in the Hollywood Derby. Uh, this horse for second by head had a horrible post position. When you're going a mile and the eighth at Del Mar and you have a wide post position, this horse was 10 out of 14. It just wasn't very good. You know, he had a horrible trip, it was wide, you know, five wide, at, he was very wide at the finish. If he had a better post position, I think this horse would have won that day. But with all, with the, with the, for a second place finish that day, this horse ran a hell of a race, I have to say that. Start before they came at Belmont, October 25th in the English Channel Stakes for 100 grand. This horse finished fourth by five and three quarter lengths, you know. It wasn't really, you know, I don't think the one turn really helps this one. The two turn will really help this horse here today at Saratoga. Especially, especially you know, um, the, um, the mile and the eighth, I think, is a better distance than a mile for this horse. He's getting mile 16th today, so that's, you know, he's in the middle. Uh, for his first start on turf, that really did help a lot. It was a very nice race. And start before that, this horse ran the King Bishop, finished sixth behind Run Happy, uh, then ran the Amsterdam, finished sixth behind Holy Boss, won the Woody Stevens, won the Bayshore last year. Um, I think this horse out of a strong chance here of winning. The biggest question is the layoff, but I think he should do well here. So I'm going to use this horse as a top selection. So to recap my bets for race number seven from Saratoga here on this Saturday afternoon, it's the basic tipped in lower stakes. I'm going to go to the five horse march. I'm going to go five, six, eight, seven. Five, six, eight, seven. So now let's get on to race number eight. And race number eight starts the one million guarantee pick four. I might have, to, I will have a ticket on my uh, Twitter account. I have to finalize it, but check for a, a, a ticket. And the eighth race is the 91st running of the test stakes, grade one, purse five hundred thousand dollars for Phillies, the rerolls. We have a field of eight horses traveling the distance of ground of seven furlongs over the Spa main track. Seven furlongs. And my top selection here is going to go to the six horse, number six. Who is Lewis Bay? Lewis Bay at nine to two. Gonna put this horse into a super fact. They're gonna go six seven three five six seven three five. In the pick four, you know, I'll use Lewis Bay. Uh, the seven horse off the track looks looks like a very good horse. I'll use her also, even though I've been screwed with her uh, in the last few starts. I'm better in the Mother Goose, I don't believe, and um, she wins. Um, I better in. I remember betting her at Gulfstream, and she loses. But um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've I've been screwed by that uh, seven horse so many times. Uh, but I'll use six seven. You know, Karina looks like a good horse. We'll use her. You know, I might use all five horses I have uh, on this ticket. So, uh, or four horses I have on this ticket. Pardon me. But, uh, you know, Lewis Bay is the top selection. Nine to two. I ride Ortiz. Last time out, ran at a... Uh, 
Belmont, the mother goose. This horse finished second by three and a quarter lengths behind off the tracks. You know, had a horrible start, horrible, horrible start. But this horse overcame it to a very nice second place finish. Wasn't half catching off the tracks, who ran basically on the lead all throughout. Then at Churchill Downs, Mom Lathan, the Kentucky Oaks. This horse finished third by three lengths. Had a decent third place finish. You know, if, if the track was playing two closers that day, I think this horse could have had a very strong, a better chance also. But it was a, kind of a front runner's kind of racetrack. And Catherine Sophia had a dream trip that day, I have to say also. And then this horse ran the gazelle at Aqueduct on the mud. This horse won by one and a half lengths, was the favorite. You know, it was a little bit wide, but had a very clear, nice, easy victory. You know, I think this horse had a good start here. The next question is the seven furlong distance, but I think this horse won as a two, as a two-year-old going seven furlongs. She's done well over one turn, so I think that should uh, do well for this horse. Um, so nine to two, gonna go with this one as the top selection. So to recap my bets for the test stakes, race number eight from Saratoga here on Whitney Day. Gonna go with the six horse Lewis Bay. Gonna go six seven three five six seven. Three, five. So now let's get on to race number nine. The ninth race from Saratoga is the 13th running of the Facic Tipton Swaya. The Facic Tipton Waya, 13th edition, grade three, purse $200,000 for Phil's Mayors, Drills, and upwards. We have a field of 10 horses traveling a mile and a half on the inner turf course. And this race, I always remember this race uh, Yeah, from years past. Uh, it used to be always run on a Monday. Uh, a few years ago, I think this might, maybe actually this year, might be the first time they're running it on a, on a, what do you call that, on a, on a Saturday. So, uh, you know, this is always a Monday stakes in my eyes, but it's a very good race, a very good grade three here. Um, and uh, my top selection, I'm going to go to the rail to number one, photo call as the top selection. I'm going to go 1639, 1639 in the super. Um, you know, I'll use photo call as the top, uh, on the ticket, of course, top selection. Why won't I use it on the pick four ticket? Uh, you know, I'll use um, Gazapa, the six horse on it. Um, you know, the, uh, three horse stuff st I'll use also, I might use all, f I might go four deep here in this race also, hopefully I have the extra bankroll to do that, but I, like I said, I'm not, f I haven't finalized the ticket yet, so, uh, bear with me, you can get that finalized ticket on my Twitter account, um, so yeah, but, uh, number one, photo call, top selection. If we could ever get this page to load, uh, technology isn't it something. Uh, Kendrick Caramouche, 8 to 1. Uh, for Todd Pletcher out of Galileo, last time out, ran at Delaware Park Mile and 3 8 on July the 9th in the uh, Robert Dick Memorial. This horse finished second by uh, two lengths that day. Was up near the leaders that day. It was basically second. Was, uh, you know, it was a nice uh, run around, but he just couldn't catch a real smart who were in a very nice race running back here today. Then the New York Stakes at Belmont on June the 10th. This horse finished six by five and three quarter lengths behind Dashida and C. Khaleesi. C. Khaleesi, who actually, I believe, will be running in the Beverly D next weekend at Arlington. Remember to follow me uh, here on YouTube for Beverly uh, for the Beverly D and Arlington Million card. Um, but this horse finished six behind those two. And, you know, this horse weakened late against a very tough competition. And then this horse won the Orchid Stakes at Gulfstream Park on mile three. It's won by three quarters length at even money. It is a very, very good victory. Um, I think this horse should have a good run. Going the mile and a half distance, which should help this one. You know, on the Saratoga turf, turf course for the first time. But I think, you know, I, the distance is the key for this horse. He's facing a little tougher, but I like the price here at 8-1 at the Graveyard of Favorites. So I'm going to use this one here. So to recount my bets for the Waya, race number 9 from Saratoga. I'm going to go with the, the one horse uh, photo call. Going to go one six three nine one six three nine. So now let's get on to race number 10. Tenth race is the feature race. Everybody's been waiting for it. It is the 89th running of the Whitney Handicap, grade one, purse $1.25 million. Uh, going uh, for three-year-olds and upwards, uh, we have a field of six horses, uh, six horses traveling a mile and one-eighth. I, I think I said Handicap, I think it's the Whitney Stakes, um, a mile and eighth. And uh, my top selection here is going to go to the three horse upstart. I think he'll have a very strong improvement off today's uh, in today's race. I'm going to go three, four, six, five, three, four, six, five. And if you ask me what the most vulnerable favorite I think on this card is, I think I'm going to say Frosted. You know, he had a hell of a race last time. I not to knock it. It was just probably one of the best 
races I've seen in the last 10 years uh, for, for that race at Frosted. Um, he just opened up and had a very, just an, a, a burst of energy. Um, but, you know, he's he, running here at Saratoga. I th uh, Frosted has never won here at Saratoga. He's two second place finishes and a third place finishes. Um, he's never won uh, around, uh, you know, he, you know, against these great quality horses at a mile and eighth. He hasn't done, like, the best of jobs, of, shall I say. Um, you know, he won the, the Wooden Memorial, but that Wooden Memorial field wasn't the best runnings of it. And he won the Pennsylvania Derby. I have to say, that was an okay running of it. But he's never really run a hell of a race here. Um, around two turns, shall I say. Um, so that's why I'm not going to pick him here. I'm going to go to the three-horse upstart. I'll be the first to... Uh, if Frosted wins, I'll be the first to congratulate him, but I'm going to find a price here, and I think I found it with Upstart 10 to 1, Irad Ortiz Jr. for Rick Violetter, uh, 3, 4, 6, 5, I might use Frosted on the pick, fo on the pick 4, maybe, but, um, you know, uh, you know, Noble Bird, I have him for the 4th on my uh, super ticket, I don't think he's that good to win, he, he, um, I, I'm not going to use him on the pick 4, FNX, maybe I'll use, that. he's kind of wise guy horse, but right now it just looks like Upstart and Frosted. Uh, 10 to 1, I read these last time. I read a Belmont, a one mile in the Metropolitan Handicap. So it's finished third by 15 and a quarter lengths. You know, you know, couldn't catch Frosted. Uh, had a hell of a race, Frosted. Um, then the Oakland Handicap at Oakland Park, Mom on April the 16th. So it's finished fifth by four and three quarter lengths. You know, it was a little bit wide. Really couldn't get a great kick. Um, and then the Razorback Handicap at Oakland, um, a mile and a sixteenth on uh, March the uh, 19th. This horse won by length. A very nice closing kick uh, in driving that day. I think the track should play towards him today. You know, last year, after the Derby, he didn't have the best runs. You know, finished 18th in last year's Derby, 3rd in the Haskell, 4th in Travers, 5th in the Pennsylvania Derby, and then they took him to the sidelines. You know, he's 3-2 over the Saratoga surface. He likes to, the course here at Saratoga. The only loss came in the... Um, in the Travers, so just keep that in mind. His other two victories came as a two-year-old, but he likes the course. He should have a strong run here today, so I'm going to use him. 10-1, to I like the price also. So, uh, to recap my bets for race number 10 from the Saratoga, it's the Whitney Stakes. I'm going to go to the three-horse upstart. I'm going to go 3-4-6-5. Three, 3-4-6-5. Four, six, three, four, six, so now let's get on to race number 11. The 11th race from Saratoga, the final race I'll be looking at here, and it's also the final race on uh, the card from Saratoga. It's the 13th running of the Facebook Tipton De La Rosa Stakes. Purse $100,000 for Phillies and Mayors, four-year-olds and upwards, number one uh, grade sweepstakes. Um, we have a field of 12, 12 horses traveling the distance of one mile here on the inner turf course. People ask me why I show the track the track diagram. It actually gives me a second to look down and see what horse I actually have. Um, so uh, to look at my uh, notes. So pardon that. <laughs> um, but um, top selection here is going to go to the four horse Lady Lara. Going to go four three ten seven four three ten seven in the Superfecta. I'll use Lady Lara in the pick four. Um, uh, you know, Stormy Victoria looks like she has a very good chance also. Um, and also, Zendaya, she has a strong chance also. The 4-3, 10-7. Uh, Lady Lara, 8-1, top selection. Jose Lascano for Belmont. Last time out, run at Belmont, June the 11th, one mile with just a game. Source finished fourth by five lengths behind Celestine. Last two starts actually lost to Celestine. Um, and this horse just was very wide. You know, it was closing up a little bit, but after a wide trip, this horse really couldn't catch the winner. Um, then at Goldstream Park, one mile in the Honey Fox Stakes on April the 2nd. This horse finished sixth by eight and a half lengths. First start in about six weeks. Uh, was the uh, two to one favorite and couldn't catch Celsius again. Celsius ran a hell of a race. This horse was wide, four to five wide, just had nothing left in the tank. And then the en Endeavor stakes the Tampa Bay Downs uh, on February 13th. Sword for second by three and a half lengths behind Tempin, who ran her hard out. It was a very nice victory for her. Last win for this horse came to My Charmer stakes at Calder back in the fall, um, but I think this horse should have uh, a good run here. Ran once here at Saratoga, ran last, in last year's Diana, this horse finished six by four and three quarter lengths. Um, I think this horse will be ready to run here. Um, not facing as tough competition as this horse was facing in the last few starts, so uh, I'm going to use this horse here. If you just look at the running lines, the horses that uh, this horse got beat by, it, it's just incredible, um, but uh, I'm going to go with this horse as a top selection. So to recap my bets for race number 11 from Saratoga's to De La Rose Stakes, I'm going to go with the four horse Lady Lara. 
I'm going to go 4 3 10 7. 4 3 10 7. So good luck to all and follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5. Good luck, everybody.